Welcome back. Another video about the project that just keeps giving. Before we get down and dirty, check you're subscribed. If you're not subscribed, why not? Um, if you are subscribed, just double check you're subscribed. YouTube is just knocking subscribers left, right and centre. Algorithms are going berserk. I expect because I swear too much. I'm never going to make any money out of YouTube. Don't you worry about that. But in this episode, I get this out of the workshop. Spoiler alert. Seemingly, all of these bolts came out okay. Some of them are showing signs of wear. The worst one was the uh, second from the front port, so cylinder number three, top bolt. I'm going to run a tap into each of these uh, fixings and just see how loose they are, because it might need a helicoil. It's easier doing a helicoil now than it is when everything starts going back together again. Now, the manifolds look like there's enough there for me to get a, a stud extractor on those studs once there is a shitload, and I mean a shitload, of fucking heat in here, and I might be able to get these studs out. But as you can see, five out of the six studs have gone. Now, none of the bolts on the manifold were particularly tight, and that one's blown, and that one's blown, and that one's blown, and that one's blown. So... Must admit, it's been that long since this engine ran, I can't actually remember um, hearing whether it was blown or not. Um, so, I'm going to get these studs out next. Um, put my radio back on, nice and calming. Less shouting when the radio's on, I tell you. Um, beautiful day today. Days like this, I really want to be working on the 89 uh, Vogue that's outside. Vogue SE, I should say, that's outside. Um, but, because... I've got to get this out of the workshop because it's doing my head in. I've been stuck inside today, but never mind. Um, I'm thinking about how I'm going to get the uh, the gasket out. These, oh, <laughs> there's all the gaskets that have come off the engine there. So that one looks all right there. It's blown on that side. Never mind. Right. Oh, Dale's torch down there as well. Thank you, Dale. Bloody good this torch. Um, oh! Oh, that's a long way up. Right. If I can get these manifolds, these studs out, new studs back in again and refitted, I can be almost back to square one. Oh, it's driving me up the fucking wall. This one here, I made the gnarls off uh, because as I started to pull it out, I thought I'll just drill down the middle of that um, and I drilled it off centre. I got to put an insert in that one. Um, the other two are fine. These two are fine. That one there, I'm going to go and see uh, Richie around the corner. He's got a induction heater and see if we can't get it out. The main reason is it goes into a blind hole. And I really don't fancy drilling that. Um, and I need to get some better drill bits anyway because I've gone through a ton of them. It's been a stressful afternoon really getting this fucking thing sorted out. Um, I wanted to um, really, again, consult with what I'm going to do about this. And I've not been in there with the uh, endoscope yet, either. Um, so, what should have been a running car driving out of my workshop this afternoon is now an even more immobilised car. So, sorry if you guys have got projects that are waiting in line patiently for my availability. But this is, this is kind of what happens. You're dealing with 30 plus year old cars they don't always want to conform and and on many occasions been bodged it's been properly squeezed there someone's had grips on that i reckon trying to make it move and then probably just glued it back in i don't know anyway it's a shambles uh, rpi never got back to me with regards to the wiring for this fucking thing um it is a clever bit of kit i'll give you that um I think when my car goes back on the road, it's not using LPG, but I'm not being in any way critical of LPG whatsoever. It's a very, very, very clean fuel, clean burning fuel, and it's a waste product. Um, and the fact that it's being banned 
for use in cars or banned I think it's not been banned from use in cars I think it's been banned to be sold um, through the uh, the LPG network in the UK it's just fucking insanity we're trying to clean up the environment or not no apparently not that's a controversial statement now on to the Y pipe why me why 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 me so let's position you there and there uh, yeah you sit there beautifully right this is where the lambda broke off um and i think i've already mentioned the lambda was pre-abused some weapons grade ham-fisted gibbonry has been going on in here uh, so look there's a crushed wire there uh, and then a lovely halford's bullet might have been another bullet but a lovely crimped pre-insulated bullet on there uh, which would have been just a parallel with the chassis rail so i couldn't really do anything with it and then the other bullet fell off so i thought ah take the lambda out i probably told you this all already so i'm going to edit in this out barely leaned on it and it snapped off now when you look at this chap specifically the end where the wires come out well i'll tell you what that doesn't half look like someone's been uh, clamped onto that doesn't it it really does look like someone has properly clamped on that now interestingly it's still got markings on there what does it say on there lucas so the original lambdas because this is not an original um uh, cat downpipe this is a, an aftermarket one as i'm led to believe the only reason that makes me think that is on the original ones one of them was much thinner and long and, and wider now Lambda sensor aside, I don't think this Lambda's been working for some considerable time. And there's a reason I think that, because when we look in this port here, it all looks very clean and tidy. Let's see if we can't get the torch in there. All looks very clean and tidy and light grey and yeah, it's all in good order. Let me go to this one. And it's like, well, it's full of carbon absolutely all the way down there it's just got lumps big lumps of carbon from a very 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 rich mixture so then i thought right okay that's worrying let's get the there it is endoscope automotive endoscope marvelous things these you pick them up on amazon and all sorts of stuff uh but the key thing is uh that we want to uh in fact let me mount you on the tripod there we are, tripody. Move that out of the way. Right, so there we go. So, Lambda, what I want to do really is just get the light on the end of this. It's got a light, you see, on the end of the probe. Two, three. That'll do it. Right, I think that's bright enough. No, that's brighter. Right, then we shall insert into the exhaust. It's obviously easy doing this two handed. I'm going to go all the way in up until we get to the core. And there you can see it. See the core on the screen? Now, that is not look it's stock still got lots of holes through it but it's started to melt now that's around this so there's the center if i can get that there's the center at the top of my screen right now top middle of the screen that's the center of the cap I'll take that out of there and go into the other side i'll show you what i mean because one of these looks healthy and the other one doesn't now do you see the difference well, this one is looking really clear and free. See lots and lots and lots of gaps in between the zigzags. Lots and lots and lots of gaps. Back to this one. And in we go. And it just looks absolutely plugged up. So I think the cat is fucked. Metaphorically. Oh, good. It's going back on. Um, 
and I think that that has happened largely because this lambda was bodged. Um, how it worked, I can't tell you. How the LPG was working, I can't tell you. Uh, the fact that it twisted off with absolutely no force and is also showing signs of being crushed with some pliers by a ham-fisted gibbon. You can see that's certainly on the end there. You can see it's, it's kind of oval on the end. Whereas that one there is rounder. But this one's been crushed. I suspect what's happened is when these pipes were put on, someone used this to get these lambdas off. Now, interestingly, these are 17 mil across flats here, um, which generally haven't caused me too many problems. I don't know where I'm going with it. Um, I'll speak to the customer. Pops round to Walter Motorsport just really for some advice rather than anything else. Um, and I took this round as well. What they basically said is that's basically been basically, basically, basically. Hello, Jack Vet. Uh, this has been running a very mix rich mixture for some considerable time. So this is the driver's side uh, uh, down the uh, exhaust manifold from the car. Um, you can see there in the exhaust ports, you can also see the damage in the down port. Um, it's been running very, very hot. So I thought, well, I'll get this lambda sensor out. No, that one was glued in too. I've tried to extract the thread. There's something weird going on with the boss. Um, I got an enormous amount of heat into it. And it started to turn, no problems at all. And then it didn't snap off so much as fell off and I don't know what's just it's weird isn't it that's just obviously that's just been either rusted off because of the age of it I couldn't tell you it's fucking still warm that's how hot that was um but yeah, it's just glued in uh, so that's two lambda sensors in that and that's red hot so that's going to go on the floor down there Go down there. Ouch. Uh, and that's what it should look like. Now, when I go into this port here, I'm not convinced that's what I'm seeing when I look in there. <laughs> I don't think either of these... I'll, I'll go in there and have a look in a second, but I don't think either of these Lambda sensors have been anything other than glued in. So this cap is okay it's still holding good form that cap uh the one that had the original broken lambda on it is melted big time so i've ordered another um uh down pipe a set of cats famous for the uh the company that reckon they can get them delivered to me for friday it's today's wednesday so i might as well leave it on the stands uh it's got to be out of here this weekend though so i've got a stag coming in monday and it needs that space um so I'm going to clean these ports out, just make sure there's nothing loose in there, because obviously I don't want to be busting up a new, uh, a new set of cats. These, this, this is another set of downpipes that I picked up. You look at these. It's probably been off the car for a little while, but even so, there's, there is some difference, is there not? And then we look at the downpipe. This is, this is off James's car, off the other side. It's a lot better but it's still rich. So I'm kind of thinking, this thing was not been running right for some time. Now I know I had a, I did have a running issue with it, um, which was actually caused in the end by an airflow meter. Um, was, it, was it an airflow meter? No, distributor. We had mixtures of problems. We had airflow meter problem. We had tube resistor problem and we had distributor problems. If I remember correctly, uh, distributor's now been rebuilt by Distributor Doctor, and now we've got a Petronic setup in there, and we have got a flamethrower coil. Still trying to work out how this fits on. I'm going to chase up RPI because I've got no idea how you fit the shielded cable when you haven't got an amplifier anymore. Because there isn't an amplifier anymore, because I've got a Petronic base plate and I've got a flamethrower coil. There's no amplifier. So, how does this thing then work? Um, yes. Uh, there is another issue with this in that the high low lever doesn't work uh, it is 
absolutely seized solid. Oh, I put some lube on it earlier on and it might. Oh, we've got it moving. We've got some lube on it and it has started to move. So I need to continue to lube that really. Because I've got it to move now towards neutral. Or maybe it's about to snap off, I don't know. The way my luck is going with this car today, sorry, this week, it could about to snap off. But on the, if I go to, oh good, it's raining. Oh, I hasn't done that for about 15 minutes. April showers, plip, plop. Now let's get you in. I can go under there for now. If we go to my gearbox, which is at the back here. This gearbox, right under here. So what we've actually got, although this is a manual gearbox, this is what the lever looks like. So you've got the lever comes through the floor with the high-low lever on the top of it, goes to this pivot point here. Then it's got a nice rod which goes to this pivot point here. This bit here very rarely seizes up. That very rarely seizes up. This is your problem. In order to access this, these two bolts have to come out, it means that the uh, automatic selector needs to come out, which is why I've been trying the lube. To start off with if I can get it lubed up and it started to free it off then fantastic this is an LT77 short stick um, box with a Borg Warner transfer box there you go covered in shite in my nice and tidy underbench area that's another Borg Warner transfer box but that one's fucked that's got a rattly chain in it so that one's there ready to me to take apart and rebuild should do a walk around of all the shit I've got in my workshop at some point, shouldn't I? Um, right. Well, I probably could get, there's probably not a lot of point putting the front wheels on until I've got the downpipe and everything back in place. Oh dear. Right, I'm going to sit and have a coffee because I've had enough. Famous Four pulled out all the stops and have sent me the front Y pipes. That I need with the cats to put on this to get an MOT. And then I thought, I'm out of breath at the moment because I've been wrestling. I thought, ah, yeah, just need to pop one of those on. That's not too difficult. I've never had a problem getting these apart, even on, I don't know, 55 year old wrecks like the one I've got out in the yard. Because um, all you need to do really, undo that nut, separate that from the top of the axle, undo the two bolts, slip them out, and you're there. Right, let's go down onto me back tools prayer mat. Yeah, those are not coming out, are they? At all. So I'm going to drop the pivot back down into the axle, and I am going to put the um, exhaust on the front, and I'm going to dump this outside because I've got a stag coming in on Monday, and this really is now how can those bolts be rusted in so some cretin and i'm going to use the word politely because the words that are actually on the tip of my tongue here are nowhere near as polite and certainly would demonetize this particular video for the absolute and utter moron that popped these in um without lubing them up whatsoever i cannot get them out as you can see the big dugger dugger gun is actually just in danger of twisting the heads off. So, before I get to that point, I'm going to secure the nut back onto the top of the A-frame. I'm going to drop the back of the car down onto the ground and do the Y-pipes. <sighs> Honestly. It does make you wonder, doesn't it? Sometimes, just sometimes, it makes you wonder. Oh, dear, oh, dear. So I've done the difficult bit. Oh, hello, what was that? That looked like something dripping down there, didn't it? Well, there isn't anything. There's no puddle down there. It's probably a little bit of the soul of the person who did that has just fallen off this car. Ah, oh, good Lord. So, worst case scenario on this is I have to uh, undo the A-frame bolts and take the whole A-frame off in order to get it off the car. There's no way am I using heat on that 
because we've got a tank full of petrol here. There's no way on earth. So the only way that's easily going to come off is by taking the A-frame bombs off. I just haven't got the time to do that now. Um, so yeah, it'll have to park outside while I've got the next job coming in because that's on a fixed time scale. And I've promised him he could bring the car in on Monday in another video. It's a stag though, folks. It's a stag. Right. Yes, part of the joy that is my life. I'll try to be more upbeat in these videos. They did a video on the brakes, probably an episode or two ago. Um, and I really had to edit about an hour and a half of negativity out of it and turn it into more of a comedy uh, because it was just awful, really. I found out what the drip was, you know, the mysterious drip that I saw happening. There's a hole in the diff pan. It appears to be covered up with filler and black paint. Oda believed it, eh? Ah, it's all diff oil. How wonderful. Oh, never mind. Right, so I did then get on. Let me get off the floor. It's a long way up. Ow. Right, it's a long way up. We're up. Now, I put the Y pipes on, which is a relatively straightforward job. What I would recommend you do is loosely fit the Y pipe to the centre silencer and then hold it up with a jack and then work on the two down pipes to each side. That's the easiest way of doing it. And then I'm topping up the uh, coolant, which is not bad i didn't drain the block right down so um it's good it's, so far it's taken about six liters uh, which is fine i didn't think there was any antifreeze in this when i took it apart so i might um put a concentrate in there this is a ready to use silicate uh, from halfords which is the right sort of stuff for classics uh brakes aren't leaking which is fantastic let's see if it starts please start please start Please, 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 pretty please. Oh, tell you what, let's put... Battery on. Right, now, please start. Oh. I'm happy with that, apart from the taco's not working. James, is your taco not working? Well, it started and then it conked out. Why is it conked out? I wonder if the uh, fuel supply, it wouldn't have run that long. Um, I wonder if it was on LPG, which is why it's conked out. Well, for a car that seems to have been in my workshop forever, it's time to move it out. There's a stag coming in tomorrow. It's not finished yet. Um, I still need to address the issues with the back axle and I still need to... Um, Connect up the power amp, finish off the interior, and get it MOT'd. Uh, but other than that, we are more or less ready to hand this back, more or less. <laughs> poor thing. Anyway, let's see if it goes. We want to.
But I'm having some joy getting this to run sweet. Um, right, let me show you through the diagnostic process. Starts up. Looks sound all that though, does it? And then we've got a miss. So I'm using the temperature sensor and I'm going to measure the temperature on the top of each bolt. So number one, let's get it up to, measure it right up against the stub, 156, 3, 175, 5, 127, 7, 196, 5, 129. Let me go across to the even bank. Eight, hundred and seventy, six, two hundred and thirty, four, two sixty six, and one, two eighty. But then it's got a lot of fan and coolant and stuff left behind it. So I think uh, number five is not working properly. You can see the engine is not smooth. I seem to recall it being smoother than this. Anyway, so I've tried swapping leads three and five over, made no difference. The problem stayed with cylinder five. So next, I'll let it cool down. I'm going to get the plug out. See what's going on with number five plug. Oh, need to sort out that lock as well. Right. So yes, um, it got to the stage where I couldn't work out where the misfire was occurring. So I then started to uh, confirm the ignition timing confirmed that all the ignition leads were pushed on properly. Um, confirmed everything, left, right, and bloody centre. Now there is one thing that I have noticed, and that is this MagnaCore King lead is very flipping short to reach the uh, contact in there. Um, if I put this beside, because the edge of the contact, I would say, is just above the lip. So when I push this right down, it should make contact. Don't feel like it though. <sighs> That's definitely on. I mean, it couldn't go any further than that. Um, this end we've got a straight edge on, which I know is definitely located in the ignition coil. Um, yeah, right, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go and have a cup of tea, wait for this to cool down a little bit, and then I'm going to take plug number five out. So let's see what's going on. Right, pulled the plugs out. Um, they look okay. Uh, nothing particularly wrong with them. The gaps are right. The only problem I've got with them is they're for the three and a half litre. Quite an old uh, three and a half litre. Um, so these are Rover SD1 plugs. And as I understand it, you need the BPR6ES for the 3.9. I don't know whether these are any good at all. Probably not an awful lot of point in... Uh, in proceeding but you can see these plugs have been running incredibly rich so i might want to get a decent set of plugs um, and we'll take it from there now i'm just going to pop the, what, I've, what i've basically done is i've taken three and five out and i'm going to swap the two plugs over anyway um and see if the problem follows a plug or not uh because i swapped the leads over uh, and the problem stayed with the plug and now we'll swap the plug over and see if the problem stays with the plug. In which case it could be something to do with the cylinder. Which will be awkward, won't it? But first and foremost, I want to really see... Sorry for the sniffing, folks. I've popped my fucking eardrum again. Uh, I need to go and see a GP. <laughs> oh, that's funny, Richard. Oh, my goodness. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, yes. I can't see the GP. <laughs> satire um okay let's get these two in and then i'm going to see if this runs any better um right where's my uh there it is right let me get these in 
Right, plugs are back in. Uh, I've just been across and just double checked the temperature of the manifolds as a baseline. They're all exactly the same across the range. So, because the key thing, I think, with these thermometers, that, that they're all right, the infrared thermometers, but you've got to be the same sort of distance away all the time. Right, now, are we going to start? Get the HT lead off the uh, pulley. Like a chronic misfire. Right, so we're up to 70 Celsius, 100 Celsius on one. Very, very low on three. 100 Celsius on five. 100 Celsius, so the plug is fucked. Yeah, cylinder number three is not running at all. Because it's the wrong plug anyway. Right, let me see if I've got another plug I can pop in there, just in the short term. Um, but at least we've now understood why we've got a very slight misfire in there. Plug number three, which was plug number five, ain't doing nothing. Right, I found my tub of old spark plugs. Um, very worn out spark plugs. I don't know why I keep a tub of old spark plugs, but I do. So what I've done is I've swapped out um, the plug, um, which was on number three. Uh, and that is now no longer this plug, which I don't think is working. BPR6E. Oh, BP. R6ES. Uh, let's see if that makes a difference. So, just a quick baseline on the 34, uh, 40, 62, 62. The front one's obviously cooled down because it's got the most cooling. Right, will this work? Please work. Oh, fucking hell, we're firing on all seven. Suddenly we're firing on seven. No, we're firing on eight. It's cold. And the base idle's not right. Right, 90, 100, 119, 112. Got all eight plugs now behaving themselves. Get me closer. 90, 90. Number eight's not the best, is it? And Noel's number one. I suspect all the plugs are fucked, to be quite honest. Um, we need to get these swapped out for the correct plugs, but it's better already. Right, it's running a lot better. We've got a problem with the fuel pressure regulator, so I don't think the fuel rail is running at its full potential. Um, but that's now running Bosch Super 4 plugs. Beautiful.